Hey guys, welcome back today. I'm going to show you how to set up an AWS RDS MySQL instance. I'm also going to show you how to connect RDS using MySQL Workbench and perform some standard SQL commands. I'm using the AWS free tier, so feel free to follow along and not worry about being charged an extra money. All right. So here. We are in the AWS console. First thing I'm going to do is go to the RDS section. Click on that, wait for this, and then we'll go to click uh, on create database. Okay, so now we will be using MySQL as our database engine. Click on that. And we are going to use default version, everything default here. So don't do not touch anything that and using the free tier, make sure you select this or else there is going to be some cost associated with your database instance. So double check and make sure you selected the free tier. In term of availability, we don't have this option because we are using free tier. It is basically just an effort to increase data redundancy. Now, for instance, AWS database identifier, I am going. I am going to call mine AWS database. You can name this anything you want. And you can keep it default if you want. It doesn't really matter. For the master username, I'm going to leave as it is. Type password. Type password for the instance size. So since we are using. Uh, type password according to you and confirm it for the instance size. Number since we are using free tier, we have selection type which is dbt2 micro. In terms of storage, we are going to use general purpose SSD and allocate 20 GB is fine for our case. However, they do have many features called auto scaling and it comes on by default. So leave this on as default. Now, in terms of connectivity, we are going to use the default VPC and subnet group. We are going to leave that as default and select here because any anyone in if they get the URL to your database, they could use your database. So we uh, we are giving public access to yes, so we can use it publicly. In terms of security group. We are going to use the default availability zone and leave as it is. In term of authentication, we are going to use password authentication. They do not have another option, but if you have IAM users and you want to grant access to the database using IAM user, you can select this option. Additional in configuration, leave that and click to a create a database. So, all right. So after a few minutes, the data was, database was successfully created. We can confirm that by seeing the status work as available. Then let's click on the our database and check and copy the endpoint. So let's check the endpoint, which is assigned to us. So make sure to copy that endpoint. So now let's move on to MySQL Workbench. And under the default view here, we're going to click the plus button so we can make a new connection. And let's give uh, give the new name anything you want. And now the host name should be the URL of endpoint that we copied from RDS dashboard. 
the default port is 3306 we can leave that as default the username is admin here first thing is to do is on click the test connection to see if this is set up correctly now we'll enter the password which we already chose now we click on test connection to see if this is setup is correctly working so we can see that it is showing successfully made the sql connection so if you had a problem at this step it may be due to security group configuration on your aws vpc so go back to the console here under security where you see vpc security groups click on the default to modify the inbound rules so click on edit button and add a new rule and for for type select all traffic and for source we need to click on anywhere this is for those who have ipv6 ips so it will allow inbound connection if your source ip is ipv6 click on source and go back to the mysql workbench and and do test again then click on ok so now we have a connection then double click on the enter your password once then enter your password once again then we can see a default view here so we are going to write a little query to interact with our database let's create a database now Okay, so let's create a database transaction fraud. We can see here that it was created successfully. That's great. 